uh, in the pagoda and like we uh, we talk a lot of uh, things like uh, happen uh, happen to us like uh, in this week yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah that's super fun it's always good when you're able to to hang out and get to to be with people and yeah that's awesome thank you for sharing <clears throat> who else would like to share Okay, I will. I will share. Yes, thank you. Yeah. Uh, last last night. Uh, I have I have a small conversation with my one of brother. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. The we uh we talk a lot, but we have uh I mean we have never any title to speak, but we talk a lot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean uh we uh, we talk stupid uh, stupid thing. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yeah, it, it's, yeah, it's very, it's very penny. Well, yeah, we, uh, so at the time, uh, I, I didn't notice, uh, at the time, the flying, uh, time flying so far, and we spent a lot of time, uh, talking with my one brother. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's made me happy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's so much fun. <laughs> that's how me and my, uh, sisters are. We'll get to talking. Sometimes it's interesting stuff, but a lot of times just silly, especially when it's like very late at night and our brains are no longer working. And very, very silly. <clears throat> it's good. Family's important in life, I think. Thank you for sharing. Who else would like to share? And if no one wants to, we'll just move on to our article. All righty. Oh, yes. Hey, Yoon. Yes. Yeah. So, Would you uh, like to share? Uh huh. Yes. Uh, what made me happy? So, honestly, that's a yesterday night. And my mentor, my English mentor, and I was discussing about the feelings for mm -hmm. like discussing about that is uh endorphins that is produce our feelings and we discuss about what makes our feeling happy like mm -hmm. walking is made me uh what being what being walking on the street like on on in the street make our endorphins produce mm -hmm. so we did we uh, accidentally discussed about some kind of endorphins that uh come from our emotion that cannot discuss so we had a lot of mm, i have some like fun mostly fun and i haven't uh been smile for a week so this is very releasing yes that's really good. Oh, I'm so glad to hear that. <clears throat> That's great. Thank you for sharing. Anyone else? <clears throat> All right. Um, can you guys remind me, did we finish uh this article about I just copy and pasted about Alan Turing, or did we stop halfway through? I think we stopped halfway through, right? Yes. I think so. Would you guys like to continue? You seem to have a lot of vocabulary questions. Would you like to continue this one or just start a new article? Uh, we want to continue. Sorry. To continue? <laughs> yes. Okay. All right. We'll continue. I was looking. There's only a few paragraphs left. So if we have time, we'll go to a new article. If not, then what's today? Next week, I guess. We'll go to a new article. Um, I just wanted to ask. Sometimes you, you guys know how it goes. Days get very busy and I forget things. And so I needed to, to check. So... I'm pretty sure this is where we stopped. What I thought we, we could do is we won't reread the whole article, but I thought we could 
uh, kind of reread from the part we cut, we stopped so that we kind of have our brains wrapped around what we'll talk about and then we'll go and talk about our vocabulary. So in the beginning part that we talked about is a lot about who Alan Turing was. He was this like computer scientist back when computers were first being developed. He created this test called the Turing test to kind of like assess the like if a computer can think on its own. Uh, he worked during World War II as like a code breaker. We talked about like the differences between like a code and a cipher where like a cipher changes words or phrases and a code changes like letters within actual words. Um, <clears throat> okay, which I asked, cause you know, some of, I don't remember who it was, but someone uh, last week asked like, well, why did they even need to create this test? Um, Anyways, so I was talking to my grandpa about it because my grandpa worked on computers when they were first being developed. Uh, and he had never heard of the Turing test or why it was needed. And so, I don't know, I didn't find an answer for you. <laughs> I thought maybe he would know because he knows like so much about computers and how they were developed and made and all these things. He did not know it. Anyways, <clears throat> okay, uh, we'll go ahead and read and then come back through paragraph by paragraph. It says, Enigma. So Enigma was this machine that created the codes and ciphers for, I think, the Germans during World War II, I think. Enigma was a cipher machine. Each code keystroke replaced a character in the message with another character determined by the machine's rotor settings and wiring arrangements that were previously established between the sender and the receiver. For extra security, the German military services services usually double encrypted their messages by changing the original text with code words and then enciphering the encoded text. In the early years of World War II, Turing worked at Britain's code breaking headquarters at Bletchley Park. In addition to mathematicians, Bletchley Park also recruited linguists and chess champions and attracted talent by approaching winners of a complex crossword competition held by the British newspaper, the Daily Telegraph. Turing's mathematical and logic skills made him a natural cryptanalyst. Whereas cryptographers write encryption systems and cryptologists study them, cryptanalysts like Turing break them. <clears throat> In 1939, Turing created a method called the BOM, an electric mechanical device that could detect the settings for Enigma, allowing the Allied powers to decipher German encryptions. Turing and his colleagues were also able to break the more complicated naval Enigma system, which from 1941 to 1943 helped the Allies avoid German U-boats during the Battle of the Atlantic. Turing's work at Bletchley Park played a vital part <clears throat> in, this ending, in ending the Second World War, World War, and he helped save thousands of British and American lives. Nevertheless, Turing would spend most of his career focused on what would eventually become modern-day computing. He was posted to serve with the U.S. Navy's Krypton... Kryptona Kryptonal what's the word, you guys? Cryptanalytic is probably how you say it. Section for several months in 1943, where he met and discussed mathematical models of communication and computation with Claude Shannon, the father of information theory. To this day, our communications networks are built on top of Shannon's ideas, while our computing devices, processors, and chips are built upon Turing's ideas. Turing's contribution to modern computing was so significant that the prestigious A.M. Turing Award, sometimes known as the Nobel Prize for of Computer Science, is named after him. It wasn't until after the 1970s that the story of Enigma could be told and Turing could be recognized for his significant contributions to modern computer science, the world of cryptography, and the defeat of Germany and its allies in World War II. Okay, <clears throat> so we can start in this paragraph here. Uh, I'll reread it for you. Enigma was a cipher machine. Each keystroke replaced a character in the message with another character determined by the machine's rotor settings and wiring arrangements that were previously established between the sender and the receiver. For extra security, the German military services usually double encrypted their messages by changing the original text with code words and then enciphering the encoded text. So any questions in this paragraph? Yeah, the word as double Say it one more time, sorry. Yeah, yeah, as double 
as established. established. Thank you. Yes. yes, established. You got it. Um, <clears throat> to like lay a foundation or to like um, uh, to like make it so right to to like start something. Uh, so so the computer, the sender and the receiver of the computer, it was already established or it was already happening. They already set that part up. Yeah. Yeah, like you can establish a new business, right? You like start a new business or establish a routine. You like start a routine and you're doing that routine yeah <clears throat> anything else uh <clears throat> the, uh the machines rotor settings mm -hmm. machines rotor settings um okay i don't know very much about computers but isn't rotor like something uh it's something about the computer and the machine is referring to the computer. Um, so I didn't ever use a computer until I was like in high school. Uh, I'm like very technology, technology illiterate or however you would say that. Like I didn't start like texting people on a phone until I was like in college. Like anyways, it looks like it's some sort of part. <laughs> I don't know it's like it rotates it looks like um I'm not sure you'll just have to like google it <laughs> um <clears throat> it looks like rotor is used often in like cars I can see in like a, a computer Oh, it looks like it's some sort of thing for, okay, all right. Uh, it looks like it's some sort of thing for like encrypting and decrypting messages where it takes like all the letters or symbols and like puts them on, if you Google like a rotor machine, uh, it puts them on like a thing that like spins. And so it will like mix up all the letters and encrypt them or decrypt them for you. Oh, very interesting. I didn't know that. So it's not exactly a computer tool. It's more like coding uh or encrypting a tool <clears throat> which they use in computers but yeah th thanks for searching up uh -huh. i'm learning things all righty anything else here sure i'm cypher i'm so very relax relax sentence and ciphering Yes, um, to encipher means, remember, cipher is where they change the, isn't cipher is where, what did they say over here? Uh, changing the word or phrase. No, I'm sorry. Changes the individual letters in the word or phrase. And so what they do is they take words and they substitute other words to code that message. And then they take those code words and they rearrange all the letters to encipher them or to make them a cipher. N is a prefix that means like to make. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, teacher. Mm -hmm. Good question. So, teacher, mm -hmm. what is the difference between coded and encoded? Uh-huh. So encode is like the verb form. So when you encode or you and cipher it's like that you are coding or you are ciphering uh whereas like code is the noun and cipher is the noun <clears throat> i'm gonna double check that i'm right but i'm pretty sure that's like the difference yeah encode is like the verb Yes, convert into a coded form. Yeah, so it's like a verb versus the noun. It means to like make into a code or a cipher. <clears throat> <clears throat> All right, we'll keep going along.
In the early years of World War II, Turing worked at Britain's code-breaking headquarters in Bletchley Park. In addition to mathematicians, Bletchley Park also recruited linguists and chess champions and attracted talent by approaching winners of a complex crossword competition held by the British newspaper, The Daily Telegraph. Any questions here? Uh, um, <clears throat> this one, this one. Chess champion? Um, no, no, no. No. The recircuit, <clears throat> recircuit linguists. Yes, recruited linguists. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's good. Recruited means to like, um, ask people to join you. So you can recruit um, athletes to play on your team or recruit students to come to your college or recruit employees to work at your business. It's to like ask people to join you, but in like to make it so they want to come join you. Yeah. And so <clears throat> Bletchley Park, this code breaking headquarters in Britain needed linguists to help break the code and they also wanted chess champions because chess champions like people who play chess can see patterns so quickly to break codes uh, and they're very like analytical logical thinkers and can think many steps ahead uh, and predict and things like that and so they're looking for these people with these skills and so <clears throat> they want they are asking them to join their headquarters, but then also wanting to be uh, interesting to them. And so that's why they hosted this competition for these people who like these types of things so that they could join their code breaking headquarters. And a linguist is someone who studies language. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, a complex crosswalk competition. Mm hmm Complex crossword competition. Complex means like difficult or challenging. Uh, crossword, do you guys know what a crossword is? Like a crossword no. puzzle? No. Uh, I wonder if I can Google it for you really quick because trying to explain what that is is going to be hard. I'm going to stop sharing my screen really quick because it won't let me type my computer. I'm going to type it in really quick. A crossword puzzle. Okay, let me get a picture because that'll make it so much easier for you to understand. <clears throat> okay, and then go back to share my screen. Okay, can you guys see that? Yeah, I just Google crossword yes. puzzle. It's like all these blanks and then like off to the side are all these phrases and you have to figure out what the word is for that phrase. And then you put the word either like across or vertical, whoops, didn't mean to click that. Um, <laughs> so that you can solve the puzzle. Yeah. So they held this, this difficult or challenging crossword competition, right? That they had to like, all these people could try and solve the puzzle, which meant that they were very smart and able to solve problems and crack codes and things like that. Yes, good questions, guys. All right, we'll read this paragraph in the middle here. Turing's mathematical and logic skills made him a natural cryptan crypt cryptanalyst. I think that's how you say that. Whereas cryptographers write encryption systems and crypt cryptologists study them cryptanalysts like turing break them in 1939 turing created a method called the bomb an electromechanical device that could detect the settings for enigma allowing the allied powers to decipher german encryptions anything here yeah the what uh -huh. like cryptanalysts uh-huh Hang on. Uh, hang on. I'm looking something up. Um, a cryptanalyst it looks like someone who breaks codes. So if you just write an encryption system or you just uh, like write ciphers 
or encrypt things, then you're a cryptographer because grapher means like graph is like the, the, I don't know that it's the root word. I, maybe it is the root word. It's like writing or pictures, you know? Uh, and then the crypto is like referring to like the code or the cipher. And then er is obviously like the person. If you're breaking the word apart into its parts. And then cryptologist, like an ologist is the prefix. Or maybe it's the root word. I'm not sure. But that say, or the suffix or the root word. I'm not sure. Uh, anyways, that's saying like uh, someone who studies, right? Like a biologist studies like science, the, the bio, uh, the body and uh or like you know living things cryptanalyst like an analyst um like evaluates and analyzes things and so they're breaking the code mm -hmm. i was looking up to see if there was a difference between like a cipher or a code and the noun encryption because you were asking earlier like if encode is different from code and i'm saying it's a verb it looks like it's a synonym that a cipher is encryption. It looks like it's it's a synonym. <clears throat> Anything else? All righty, we will keep moving along. Turing and his colleagues were also able to break the more complicated naval enigma system from which, which from 1941 and 1943 helps the Allies avoid German U-boats during the Battle of the Atlantic. Turing's work at Bletchley Park played a vital part in ending the Second World War, and he saved thousands of British and American lives. Any questions here? Complicated here. Say it again. Complicated. Mm -hmm. Complicated means like very difficult or confusing, very challenging. It's not simple or easy. It's complicated. Yes, teacher. Mm Anything else? Alrighty. <clears throat> Nevertheless, Turing would spend most of his career focused on what would eventually become modern day computing. He was posted to serve with the U.S. Navy's cryptanalytic, I don't know why this is so hard for me to say. Is that how you say it? Okay. Uh, section for several months in 1943, where he met and discussed mathematical models of communication and computation with Claude Shannon, the father of information theory. To this day, our communications networks are built on uh, are built on top of it's probably what like a pawn. I mean, I guess built on top of sort of works are built on top of Shannon's ideas, <clears throat> while our computing devices, processors, and chips are built upon Turing's ideas. Turing's contribution to modern computing was so significant that the prestigious A.M. Turing Award, sometimes known as the Nobel Prize of Computer Science, is named after him. <clears throat> Any questions here? Yeah. Uh, what's my computation? What is computation or communication? Yeah. Computation, oh, yeah. 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 Communication is like talking to each other. Computation. No. Computation. Yeah, computation. Yeah. Uh, uh, is like to compute. Uh, would be the verb form. Uh, which is like doing math essentially. Like when you compute numbers, uh, you're you're doing math with them. Let me see if there's a better definition I can look up like a computation I've ever ever heard of math yeah like calculate to answer find a calculation using a computer to calculate numbers yeah um 
so then this would just be the noun form of that of the computation the the answer that's found from looking from uh computing all those numbers yeah thank you chair mm -hmm. uh to show uh prestigious yes prestigious means like very important very honorable if you're a prestigious person or you earn a prestigious award, it means like you're highly honored, highly respected. Uh, thank you. Mm -hmm. And uh, what's the chips mean in here? Yes. Computers and chips. Uh huh. I th I'm pretty sure this is referring to like computer chips. You know how like uh, computers have like all their like. <clears throat> information and data stored on like little computer chips that's what i think it's referring to yes thank you yeah good question it's mm -hmm. yes say it again i didn't hear you sorry significant mm. Significant, it's oh, important. thank you. Significant, yes. <laughs> um, significant, sort of like life changing. So, Turing's contribution, right? His computer or machine that broke the code, the the things that he discovered and created about computers was so significant it was so like life altering or or like changed his field changed computer science so much that it will never be the same because of what he did so significant is like it's so important that it will never be the same as how much you changed it <clears throat> It has great, great importance. And it like has impact or makes a difference in some way, a positive difference. It like, another way you can think of it is like giving meaning. Uh, some people will refer, I don't know that I would give that definition for this context, but like a lot of people say like, I want my life to be significant or my work to have significance. Like it has deep meaning or impact in what you do or what your work, to, uh, how it helps. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay, anything else? All right our last paragraph here. It wasn't until the 1970s, <coughs> excuse me, that the story of Enigma could be told and Turing could be recognized for his significant contributions to modern computer science, the world of cryptography and the defeat of Germany and its allies in World War II. Uh, what is allies? Allies. Um, yeah. um, Um, like, okay, sorry, my brain is going too fast, because what I want to say is it's like your friends, but you wouldn't really say that. It's like in a, in the world wars, uh, like, because there were so many different countries involved, then they were called, like, the allies, well, the Axis and allies, but then like in this case, it's talking about Germany and its allies, like the people who supported Germany or the countries that were working with Germany or on that side of World War II versus the other side and those countries with Britain and the US and all those other countries. And so allies are people who are your friends, right? Or people who will work with you to accomplish something. It's often used in like a war setting, uh, like your allies during during war. Um, I'm trying to think, because you also use it in like, if you're trying to like stand up for something you believe in, 
or if you're in an argument with someone, like there's some sort of conflict and someone is on your side or agreeing with you or helping you, then they're your ally. Um, or if you're trying to persuade someone to agree with you, right? If there's some sort of disagreement and someone is on your side trying to also persuade them, then they're your ally. So someone who's like on your side and helping you to find resolution in a conflict or persuade the, the opposite side. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Man, some of these words, I have to like think a lot. There are probably people out there in the world that it's not so difficult for their brains. <laughs> Good questions, guys. Anything else? Okay, I'm going to stop sharing my screen a minute so that I can look at my other tabs up here. For some reason today, my Zoom won't let me just click on my things. All right, I'm looking at the time and looking at how long this article is. I'm going to see if I can't find a shorter article. 